Can we go to the mall today? The mall? The mall. I'm going to the mall. For peace of mind, I need to know where the bathrooms are in relation to where I'm going to be. I go on the website. I search for directions. I make sure the wheelchair sign is clicked. I start at Sephora. And the map will show me where to go. Across from Sephora, there's an elevator to level 1. I take the elevator, and there's a clear path to the accessible bathrooms. Hey guys, Oda here. So that skit in the beginning wasn't completely a joke. It's actually how I used to do things at one point, believe it or not. I'd have to literally map out bathrooms to wherever I was going to be. If I couldn't find a map, I'd have to make my own map. This was part of my life, socially, professionally, even academically. I remember the height of my neurogenic bladder problems occurred when I first started going to York University. It got to the point where I even had to select courses that weren't far away from bathrooms. Also, it was a common occurrence to see me dashing out of a classroom to head to a bathroom. So how does the body sense the fullness of the bladder, indicating when we have to pee? Watch this. Inside the layers of detrusor muscles are millions of stretch receptors that get triggered as the bladder fills. They send signals along your nerves to the sacral region in your spinal cord. A reflex signal travels back to your bladder, making the detrusor muscle contract slightly and increasing the bladder's pressure so you're aware that it's filling up. Simultaneously, the internal urethral sphincter opens. That's how it should work. With a spinal cord injury, nerves, receptors, and signals, reflexive and otherwise, are heavily compromised. Neurogenic bladder is common with spinal cord injury because the nerves that carry the messages back and forth between the bladder, the spinal cord, and the brain typically don't work the way they should. In this mix of this bodily confusion comes bladder spasms which further affect urinary retention. All in all, this accumulates into an unholy amalgamation that directly impacts my ability to fill, void, and hold my bladder, resulting in urinary frequency and leakage. Now always keep in mind that it depends, it always depends. No two experiences are exactly the same, and it depends on the level of spinal cord injury, how complete it is, which of the nerves and which reflexes are affected, and this will vary from person to person. However, for me, at first I tried natural remedies, but as I got older and began aging with a spinal cord injury, symptoms of my neurogenic bladder were getting worse, and starting to have an impact on my life and my day-to-day -day activities. As I said, I even got into the habit of mapping out bathrooms before I went anywhere. The good news is there are medications for this known as anticholinergic medications, like ditropan that relax the bladder muscles. I have tried ditropan and myrobetric. However, I found that I was still experiencing side effects and I was still experiencing leakage at around 200 cc's. As a result of this, I decided to try Botox injections in the summer of 2015. Truthfully, my experience with Botox has been life-changing. It started with a referral to the urologist. The urologist determined I did need Botox and it was a good option for me given my history. And then I was educated. Botox has been used for many years for wrinkles, as you've probably seen on TV or in Hollywood with the no-expression look. Botox, specifically for SCI, is used for such things as treating spasticity, excessive sweating, and relevantly, hyperactive bladder. Botox affects skeletal muscles, but also works to relax the smooth muscles of the bladder. It basically calms the bladder down. And it's a procedure that has been FDA approved since 2013. This all made it easy for me to make my decision to go forward with the minimally invasive procedure. Once I was ready, a date was set. The process could not have been smoother. It was awesome. The Botox was covered by ODSP. Two vials of 100 units each cost around $900. And a company called NKS Health manage the storage of the Botox and delivery on the day of, 
So it was extremely stress-free and I didn't have to worry about storing or delivering my Botox vials. I just showed up on the day of, had my injections and I went home. And this is the instrument I typically use. Um, it's a flexible cystoscope, a tiny little scope and a tiny little needle. Uh, the route is through the urethra, just to demonstrate. I could use this model to show you that you can go through the urethra, which is the tube that connects the bladder from the outside. It's called the urethra. So you go through the urethra tube that leads you straight into the bladder, and then you are able to inject different locations. That's it. It's a quick, relatively pain-free, minimally invasive procedure that you can have and then go home right afterwards. Keep in mind though, Botox doesn't last permanently. Your body does get rid of it. Typically, it lasts anywhere from six to eight months. However, for me, I've noticed it lasts anywhere from eight months to a year and even beyond. All in all, Botox was worth it. It has been life-changing. It has given me peace of mind and most importantly, the ability to be spontaneous, to go out anytime that I want without having to map out all the bathrooms. Hey, let's go shopping. Shopping? Well, it's a good thing I can last for hours.